Hey guys, what's up? Today I've got a really cool Doodly effect for you. Um, I created this really cool animation using Doodly and a couple other softwares. Um, it's more of an advanced technique that I'm gonna show you how I did today. If you saw my Doodly product review or tutorial, you know that Doodly is a whiteboard animation software. It's an online based platform. And if you haven't bought Doodly yet, I do have an affiliate code in my description below. If you are gonna buy Doodly, I'd love if you used that code because it will help support my channel so I can make more great videos like this one I'm gonna share with you today. This technique's a little bit more advanced. You're gonna need an editing software to do it as well as a photo editing software like Photoshop. And of course, you're gonna need Doodly. If you're new here, I'm Jen Jager. I own a professional video production company called Plum Productions, and I also have my YouTube channel here. And if you're not new, welcome back. I'm so excited that my channel has been growing really fast and that you guys are loving this content. So let's dive right into this Doodly tutorial. Um, you're gonna see me talking to you here on camera, of course, and you're gonna see what I'm doing on my computer screen as I create this technique. So the first thing we wanna do is take a really cool video shot. I love this one of our model running with the balloons. She looks so joyful. So I've got here, I'm in Final Cut now, and I've queued up my playhead to the very first frame of my video, and I'm gonna go up to the right here and I'm going to save the current frame. So we're calling it Doodly Color Export. There it is. We're gonna hit Next. And let's just save it to the desktop. So the next thing we're gonna do is open Photoshop. We're gonna create a new blank file and we are going to make the dimensions the same size as our video. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna place my still image here in the frame, and there she is. And I'm going to cut her out. Okay, so now I've cut her out and I've got her, you can see here, over a blank background. I've, I've turned off the actual default background. You can see with the ribbons on the balloons, they're not like the prettiest cutout. It's a little bit difficult to cut out those tight, tight lines off that busy background, but that's okay. Okay, so now what I've done is I've saved that cutout color image as a PNG file. I'm gonna save that for later. Now we're gonna treat that photo to make it look like a sketch. So the first thing I'm gonna do is adjust the lighting and crank up that contrast and darken the brightness. I'm also going to play with the shadows and the highlights to really make her very contrasty and dark. And then what we're gonna do is drop down the saturation. And then we're gonna use the graphic novel uh, effect. And I'm just gonna play with these sliders to really get that effect I want. And the end result is that she kind of looks like a doodle. So then we're gonna go ahead and export that image also as a PNG. Okay, so now that we've done that prep work, let's bring it into Doodly and I'll show you how some of the magic happens. So you're gonna to wanna to open Doodly and create a new video with a custom background. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is hit that green default color, but let's take the green all the way up to the top right corner. We're gonna make it this really bright green because we're actually gonna key out the background in Final Cut. And next up, we need to upload the images that we just created. Let's hit that upload button. Um, let's browse files. And here is Leslie cut out the sketch. And then we have to enter a title, which I don't understand because the name of the file should be the title, but that's okay. Okay, and there she is. And what I'm gonna do is select her and I'm gonna resize her so that she is filling the frame so we know it's gonna match perfectly with the first frame of our live action video. So there she is. And now we need to add the color version as well. So let's go back, browse the files. Oop, Leslie cut out, there she is. And again, I have to name it. Leslie cut out color. Okay, here's the color version. We're gonna select it to resize 
And again, we're gonna make it, make it the exact same size as our whole canvas. So it should cover the black and white version perfectly. And now let's go back to this black and white version and look at the settings that we've got going on here. Um, we've got it drawing in over the duration of three seconds. We've got no exit animation, which is great. So that's good. Now on this pink one, we have to decide how much longer we want to wait before this comes in after the uh, black and white version has drawn in. So let's just delay it like Why'd that pop up? Let's just delay it like, I don't know, one and a half seconds. Um, okay, and so let's look at these asset settings. Again, it's going to draw in uh, no exit animation. That sounds good. And let's hit the scene settings here. We want to pad out the end. See where it says extra time at end? Um, we want to add a few extra seconds where the scene is just going to kind of freeze where nothing's happening because this is going to help us in later in editing when we want to create a transition. I'm going to make it a hold time of five seconds, which is a very long time. It's not necessary. I always prefer having extra pad time at the end. I feel like it gives me a lot more flexibility when it comes time to edit um, in Final Cut. So I always say add more than you think you're going to need just to be safe. So we're going to apply that. But let's look at the, the hands that we can choose from. We've got this guy with the sweater. And then we've got some bare hands. I kind of like this woman's hand. Um, so let's apply that. Okay, now I wanna draw your attention down to the bottom left corner at the timeline here where this uh, button is settings. It looks just like the scene settings here at the top right, but this one has some extra features that are gonna be important for us. So what we wanna do is you'll see here, there's more options because these timeline settings are um, affecting your entire timeline. Now in this particular project, I'm only doing this one scene. Uh, if you were having multiple scenes over the course of your doodly timeline, these settings that we're about to do now would apply to all the different scenes and how they change from one to another. But like I said, we're just doing one scene for now, but it is important for us to play with this tab and I'm about to show you why. Um, you wanna go over here to smart mode. Actually, you know what, before we do this, I'm gonna show you what it's doing now and how we're gonna change it. So let's hit that preview button because this will be helpful for you to see. So the image gets sketched on and then it gets erased and then the color version comes on. So that to me is problematic. We don't want that uh, black and white version to be erased because we want the effect to actually color in and it can't color in if it's gone. So a couple things I'm gonna do right now. I'm actually gonna make the pink or the full color version of the image a little bigger. I felt like I could see you know, some of the lines of the black and white image poking out behind it. So, so I'm just gonna kinda play with this until it's fully covered. Okay, that looks better. And then let's draw your attention again to this settings button here on the timeline. We are gonna go uh, look at this erase mode and we're gonna set it to off. So the white illustration will not wipe off before the full color one comes on. Let's show, let, let me show you what, what I mean. So this is sketched on and then it colors in. Now the coloring on this is okay, but I think it could be better. Um, so what I would like to do is create a custom path for this second coloring in. The first one just kind of like sketches in and I think that's fine. It's happening really fast. Um, and it knows that my cutout PNG doesn't take up the whole frame. So it's not like it's sketching top left corner to bottom right. It really is just sketching that specific image, which is fine. But for the coloring in, I actually want it to be like more detailed. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to make that custom path. So we're gonna go over, make sure that the full color version is selected. We're gonna hit this pencil and you're gonna see you have like crosshairs here. Um, and what I'm gonna do is sort of mimic that zigzag pattern. You can see in the top right to preview what, how it's coming in. So like her head and the, the balloons come in first, then her head. I'm actually wanna start with her head and not do the balloons till later. So I'm gonna uh, start at the top of her bun here. I'm gonna click these crosshairs and I'm just gonna zigzag right to left. 
So we are sketching her in, but not in the same way across the whole image. We're gonna be more strategic about how she gets, how she gets sketched in. Now I'm gonna jump to the top of these balloons, but I actually wanna not, I don't wanna go straight up for my last point because then you're gonna see these balloons like draw in straight here. So I'm actually gonna click like around. So I'm going around and then I'm gonna start over here. Zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. So if you look at this window here, it doesn't look very impressive, right? It just looks like scribbles. So what we wanna do is pump up the path size all the way up. Now, this is what's important to look at. I'm gonna show you, see this little area here that is not covered by my red path, I need to fix that. I need to close everything. Every inch of my image needs to 100% be um, covered in red right now. So you'll see this little part here. There you go. Okay, so let's save that and let's do a preview of this whole thing. Okay, great. Okay, this looks great. So I'm gonna go ahead and export. Now I wanna change the um, resolution to custom because I want it to be that 4K custom. And if you constrain the aspect ratio, it'll automatically know what your height needs to be if you put in the, the width or vice versa. So let's hit continue and we are gonna sit back and let this render. Okay, now that we have completed our Doodly video, we've exported it. Now let's bring it into Final Cut and put on the finishing touches. Okay, so we're in Final Cut and you'll see here that I've got my live action video queued up. First thing I'm gonna do is hit Option W to add some dead space before my live action video. And the other thing I know I'm gonna need for that transition between the two backgrounds is a still image of, I'm gonna need that still image of this frame. So I'm gonna grab that still image that we exported at the very beginning of, of the video tutorial. And so what you'll see here is a still image and then she gets running. So now let's drop in our Doodly video over on the track above. Now it looks really long. And if you remember, I added five seconds of pad toward the end. And of course I did that deliberately. So we would have a little bit of play time with our transitions. Um, so what I'm gonna do here now is we're gonna head on over to the effects tab. We're gonna go down to keying, grab the keyer, drop it in. And okay, now she's over a black background. And underneath that, I'm gonna take this polka dot graph paper. I'm gonna uh, drop it beneath my doodly video and already you can see how cool that looks what we're gonna do is rotate this to change the aspect ratio make it nice and big bring it down there we go and so now let's look at what we've got now so she gets sketched in and she gets colored in and then she's off and running. So we're gonna play with the timing down here of um, the way it goes from the polka dot background to frozen to running. So what we need to do first of all is add our transition. So we're gonna go over here to wipes and we're gonna pick that chevron transition and I'm gonna drop it in between my polka dot background and my still image. I'm gonna extend it so it's a little longer. And then I'm gonna customize this transition so that the edge treatment is a solid color. And I'm gonna color pick from her dress. I'm gonna pick a really dark color here. And there we go. Okay, and this is where the pad comes in. I need her to stay frozen over the course of this transition. Give it a second to render. There we go. So you see here that the chevron goes behind her 
And then this is the still image. This clip here is the still image that we exported at the beginning. Now, I'm gonna trim that. So underneath this transition is the still image. So it goes from the polka dots to the still image and then right into the live action video. I can zoom in so you can see. So here's our still image, which is the same frame as the first frame of our video, of our live action video. All right, so let's watch it again. How cool is this? She's gonna get colored in, and then the background, and she's off. Isn't that a really fun effect? And yeah, it's a little more advanced because you can't just do it all in Doodly. You have to have Photoshop or another photo editing tool to cut out uh, whatever your object is. And you also need a video editor to create this whole live action video thing. So I like Doodly because it works uh, if you because you can customize the background and use that keying effect it works with your suite of existing software that you probably use a lot anyway and you just kind of have to think creatively about how to implement um, and integrate these different softwares to make them do really cool things that none of them alone will do and so that is today's tutorial again if you are gonna buy Doodly, check out my affiliate code below and let me know if there's any other like cool effects that you've seen that you want me to kind of reverse engineer and show you guys how they work, whether it be in like Toonly or Powtoon or something like that. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you next Monday.